everyone. Tony Costa here. And my lovely wife recording for me. Thank you so much, dear. We're here at the famous Areopagus. This is the place where the Apostle Paul came to preach the gospel to the Athenians. And you can read about that in Acts 17, verses 16 to the very end. We're going to read that portion of scripture. Acts 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul was waiting for them, that's Timothy and Silas, his spirit was provoked while he was waiting for them at Athens, where we are now. While Paul was waiting for Timothy and Silas at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him and said, Some said, or what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, that's where we are right now, saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. Verse 22 says, So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, that's where we are now, just a very quick comment, the Are Areopagus is the hill of Ares, the god of war, and the Romans called it Mars Hill. Mars was the Roman name for Ares, the god of war. Forget the words martial arts from, for example. And the Apostle Paul stood here and he addressed the men of Athens. And this was a place where the councils would usually meet to discuss various laws and, and dealing with criminal cases. Paul addresses the men of Athens and says, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself, himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and boundaries for their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst. But some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others 